got some fan questions, including one from a Buckeyes fan who couldn't resist, had to put the, <laughs> right, the needle us a little bit uh, as yeah, to well, uh, right, the, the, the famous, you know. Dave from Columbus. Yeah. You know, Hi, the, Dave. O OSU fan who was at the good versus elite game in 2018. How's the progress of becoming elite going? First of all, it was great versus that's, elite. Let's get right. that. Let's get that straight. Okay, good versus great. Yep. Yep. Um, we'll find out Saturday, won't we? Yeah. And yeah. I'm just curious though, Ohio State's progress towards being elite is after Michigan beat them last year. Yeah. I mean, we'll see. And you know, I'll repeat what I said last week in some of the bonus stuff is. Penn State, Coach Franklin, has really went after Ohio State. They've built the roster to try and beat the Buckeyes. Didn't really build it to face a Michigan team that got constructed the last couple of years, and they destructed Penn State the other, the other week. But we'll see how they can hang at home against Ohio State well, the, with the wideouts the, and all those defensive backs, Tom. Yes, but the thing about Michigan that I'm watching is they're going back to playing old-school Michigan football. They sure are. And that's what they're going to do, and they're going to be a physical, pound-you team, plus – be able to still throw the ball a little bit. Yeah. I mean, a lot of, a lot, a lot of football is matchups. If you yep, took yeah. and said who's got the most talented roster in the Big Ten, Ohio State has the most talented roster. However, how do they match up against Michigan? Well, you got all these DBs in the field, same thing with Penn State, and the Michigan packs the box in and they run the ball north yep. and south. That's tough to adjust to. Yeah, so, and the Nittany Lions weren't the only ones that didn't match up well with the Wolverines last year. Exactly. As we, as we found out. Okay. Okay. Thanks next for one. the question, Dave. Yeah, let's go to our <laughs> next question. <laughs> And our next question, I think, is more is more of a positive thing. We've got uh, uh, the Ohio State game has certainly become a big game on the schedule, at least for the fans. Well, I would say for everybody else too. Um, how special was it for you guys when you coach in this in these games, Carter? Tom, when you coach <laughs> these games, the, the thing I remember the most about these games they were always competitive. They were always great games, well coached, well played. Sportsmanship was great. You know, it really was. It was good, tough football. There was a couple games, I said it earlier, there were some whiteout games. Uh, the one game in 2005, I never saw the stadium so loud. I thought it was coming down. I really did. It was. I could see it shaking. The press box was literally shaking. So it's yeah. just a memory I have of the great contest, the great competition between what I think are the two premier schools in the Big Ten. Yeah. Well, I think from, from a recruiting standpoint, you know, there was so much overlap. You know, Curtis Enos came to Penn State. Joe Ver Jerry Vicious came to Penn State. Kajana Carter came to Penn State from Ohio. And then, you know, guys like Pryor went there. And, you know, even A.J. Hawk, you know, we had A.J. Hawk on campus as a junior. We offered him. And then you go to that 05, and we really had a chance to get him until Trestle got him. But if you looked at that 05 game, A.J. Hawk could have been one of Penn State's linebackers with Puzlesny and with Connor and, those, and Tim Shaw and those wow. guys. And you go... Wow. I mean, just the talent that's on the field whenever these two teams play. You hit, you hit it's it. awesome yeah. to watch. You hit it, it on the nail it. for me. That's what yeah. I love watching is, well, there the is level talent. of talent. There is a lot of talent, but the thing that I'm always impressed with, there is great sportsmanship in the game. You don't see a lot of pushing and shoving. Yep. You just see good football. Yep. And, and, and there's and two wideouts from Pennsylvania that are gonna, could be a problem, and hopefully – that's the last of that. Yeah, no <laughs> doubt about it. And, you know, look, we said the talent, you see them so much on those Saturdays. You see a lot of them on Sundays in the years ahead for both of these teams for sure. Okay, last we got question. another one. Yep. And this one is a X and O one. I hear guys on TV talking about 12 or 11 personnel. Can you guys explain what that means? That's from Kelly. Uh, Kelly, we will be happy. Let's take a look at what that means, Tom. And, and if, you, if you put up the next graphic, there's a, there's a shot of what it means. Um, so basically, you have five skill guys on the field. So you could have four running, four running backs, a quarterback, three wideouts, two outs, whatever it is. So what the, that number means, just take this out of here, is this the number, first number is the number of running backs, the second is the number of tight ends, and then you have to do a little math to figure out how many wideouts. So 21 <laughs> gives you two running backs, one tight end, and that leaves two wideouts. 12 is one running back, two tight ends, two wideouts. 11, one running back, one wide out, three. And then, you know, 10 personnel is one running back, zero tight ends, four. Now, when you look at Penn State, they are in these two personnel groups almost 85, 90% of the game. They, this is where they live offensively. But, as Tom will tell you, it's not just the personnel groups. It's the personnel groups times the number of formations. Yes. Well, not only that, but you <laughs> left out my favorite formation, Oh, oh. Okay. Which we used to run. <laughs> yes, which I don't like. But what happens to me in these formations is, yeah, this is 20. Oh, let's take this one. This is 12. But what is that tight end? 
Is he half a wide out? Is he half a tight end? How, you have to figure out what do you count him as in, right. in, in the scheme of things. And sometimes that's based on down and distance. Oh, well, yeah, that's 12 personnel. But, hey, third and six is no. We're not counting it as that now. Yeah. Well, we would get into this with Brett Brackett, who <laughs> was a 220-pound guy who could play wide out. And, or we get in with Andrew Corliss as the second guy who's a 250-pound tight end. So when you look at 2008, for example, when we were in a really variable, we were in 16 different personnel groups. Right. But take a look at the, at the first screenshot that we got. Now, you take that and then you multiply it times formation. So here you have 12 personnel, wide receiver, tight end, tight end, wide receiver. Now, you could take the running back and line him up here. You could take him and move him over here. You could take the... So now it's not just who's on the field, it's where they line up. So now we got to get matchups. And so when you start to multiply formations and motions times personnel groups, guys like Tom are sitting there going, oh my God, I get all these different combinations. <laughs> yeah, and and he, brings up, he brings up a guy like Brett Brackett, for example. Brett played half wide out sometimes. Yeah. So now he's out there at number one. You know, he's a six foot five guy, and you get your five nine maybe corner out there on him, yep. and now they're throwing jump balls. Yeah, Mika Siki was one of those matchup yep. yes, issues a good example. that you could throw out yeah. there, and he, so, you know. So here's just a quick example of a balanced set. Now let's go to the next one. It is also 12 personnel. Now you've got tight end, tight end, running back. So now you've got a run heavy set over here. You can do some trips, bunch type stuff. And you still got the wide outs out here. You can motion the wide out over here and hand him the ball. So, again, as you're on defense, I know 12 personnel's in the game, but how are they going to line up and how do they deploy yeah. them and how do we match up? And that's going to be something to watch Saturday. Not only that, but you brought it up because you're an offensive guy. You like those bunch sets because now who's on the point? How do you cover the yep. point? Who's where? That depicts now how we're going to have to play those bunches. Yeah. Okay, now let's go to 11 personnel. We've got two examples just of 11. So now you got three wide receivers, okay? you got a tight end and a running back. So here's just a balanced two receivers and two receivers. So not a big problem in terms of lineup on defense when you're balanced because now – you got a pretty good feel of where, you know, where guys are, you get a matchup. So that's one way to look at it. But again, you can motion the running back out to no backs. You know, in, two, in 2008, we got on the two-yard line against Michigan State. We had three tight ends and two running backs in the game. So we're in a jumbo set, okay? We broke the formation and ended up in empty. And Michigan State's got all these defensive linemen on the field. They, don't, they couldn't cover anybody, and we just ran a quarterback sweep and walked in. Yep. So again, you can do things. Now, take a look at the next one, also 11 personnel. Here's the tight end in the middle, wide receiver, wide receiver, wide receiver bunch. Here's your running back. But again, you could also put the tight end here and the wide out here, and now he can motion, you can run the ball over there. So there's a lot of different things you can do. And again, those are the personnel groups, but again, it's not just personnel, it's where they deploy them. Because you brought up the good point. This guy, can he play some receiver too? Because yep. if he can, there's another issue you have. You know, a guy like Barkley, you could take him and move him out, yep. and he could run routes. Evan Royster was a great route runner. And everybody's looking for those guys that can run routes. And with younger running backs that Penn State has right now, probably not part of their repertoire, but probably will be down the road. But So that's, your, that's a long answer to a very simple question uh, from Kelly. Thank you very much, and we'll, we'll get more questions next week. Well, and in this particular game, you may see a 10 where, you know, Ohio State has four wideouts that they can put out there, yep. whereas Penn State has four corners that they might be able to cover them. So we'll see. I mean, we'll see how tight they want to play this and how wide they want to play this. But both teams have options when it comes to defensively and offensively to match up. And that's what, yeah. that's what and, Penn State's and, been trying to do is match up with the Buckeyes. And I think one of the things is if you get into a 10 situation, I can take my best wideout and put him in a slot, and now I'm on your third or fourth corner. Yep. Because if he was, you know, if he was, the, if he could cover our best receiver, he'd be starting at corner. Yeah. Or if it's a safety, as we say all the time, if safeties could cover, they'd be corners. If corners could tackle, they'd be safety. So that's how you get people where you want to get them. And that's why you hear the famous saying, "Come on, pass rush." Okay. Because <laughs> if you got a pass rush, it, it solves a lot of solves those issues. Solves a lot of problems. Yep. And as Joe used to say all the time, it's about getting the right people in the right position, doing the right things at the right time. And that's what personnel really comes down to. Cool. Very good. Well, we appreciate the question, Kelly, and a nice answer. Everybody got a little smarter, including myself. Happens every time I'm around you guys when it comes to football. So uh, anything else you wanted to no. add? There you go. There's your bonus content for this week. Penn State, Ohio State. Can't wait for this matchup. Thanks for watching.